the only one that's uh, that's missing from the board at this time. All right, thank you. So we'll call the May 17th uh, regular select board meeting to order. It's John Quinn, Dave Sawyer, Brad Town, myself, Justin Lawrence here. Um, any additions or changes to the agenda, Vince? No, sir. Okay, uh, public comment. Hearing none, Diane, treasurer's report. Sorry, I was trying to unmute myself. Um, okay, the only thing I did today is I did put on um, the website, the conservation committee meeting that is on um, Wednesday of this week. So just <clears> to let everybody know, they're having a meeting um, at two o'clock on Wednesday and I put the agenda on. And otherwise, not anything else I have is in the agenda. And will that be a Zoom meeting? I'm thinking yes. it is a Zoom meeting, but I did contact Phil Gentili and asked him um, to give me the information for the Zoom because he did not. Uh, I, I have it, Diane. Morning. I'm I'm hosting it, Diane. I'll be I'll be running the meeting for oh, them. Okay, great. Okay, so once you give me that information, I'll put that on the website. Okay. Thank you. All right. Hey, Vince, can you go ahead and mute everybody and then have them unmute if they're speaking, give some instruction on how to do that? I certainly can give it a try. <laughs> Thank you. There was a little bit of background noise, that's yep, all. I, I think everybody is muted except for you and Mr. Sawyer and me. Okay. I am working on mute. Well, he nailed it midstream. That's perfect. All right. <laughs> Uh, GMT transit proposal presentation. We yeah, have John we, at available. Hey, John. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Um, thanks for having us. I'm uh, John Moore. I'm the general manager of uh, Green Mountain Transit, and I'm joined by uh, Matt Kimball, uh, who's our uh, capital projects manager. And uh, we just wanted to uh, quickly present um, a site selection study we have underway for a uh, new uh, maintenance and uh, operations center in Washington County. Um, as you may know, our current facility is actually in the town of Berlin on uh, uh, Route 12, just south of Dog River Road. Uh, we've outgrown that facility. Uh, there are some um, expansion constraints, and it's uh, very inadequate for our current needs. Uh, so with VTrans, uh, we partnered uh, with a uh, site selection study, uh, looking at ways uh, we can lower our operating costs and improve our efficiencies with a, a new uh, facility. Um, so. Uh, Matt will go into some of the details, but the uh, preliminary findings of that study have identified two locations uh, as kind of the top choices, uh, both of which uh, happen to be in Berlin, uh, in one uh, which is actually owned by the town. Uh, so we thought it was appropriate after speaking to uh, Vince and Tom to uh, present some information and take any questions uh, at this time. Uh, so with that, I'll turn it over to Matt. And uh, like I said, we'll be happy to answer any questions you folks have uh, uh, afterwards. Vince, would you like me to share my screen with the presentation? Yes, uh, I think that would be uh, ideal. I just have to, uh, I have to give you the uh, ability to do that. Let me. Uh... It will not let me allow you to share the screen for some reason. Huh, it's not, uh, not giving me that option. It's just allowing uh, share screen. Nope. Vince, are you able to share it on your screen? I can. Um... Let you know when to move the next slide if, if necessary. Got one second here. I'm getting some technical assistance here to okay. try to fix this. It should work now because I just tried and I was able to share a screen. Okay, I can share now. There you go. Okay. Okay, can everyone see the presentation? Yep. Okay. Great, so as John said, we're seeking an alternative site for our operations and maintenance uh, facility in Washington County. 
uh, due to all the issues that we have with the current site. Uh, we are engaged in a site selection study, which began in November 2020 and is still ongoing. Uh, we're working with uh, CTAA uh, and LSC transportation consultants who have uh, previous experience with uh, several of these this type of project uh, to lead the study. We focused on potential sites in Berlin, Montpelier, and Barry uh, for the for our headquarters. Uh, the, the site was focused on appropriately zoned sites with a minimum of three acres of available space. And our goals for the for the uh, future facility include uh, increased maintenance shop capacity, uh, sufficient indoor parking, bus parking capacity, and improved administrative spaces, including uh, staff break areas. So the site. The uh, study began with uh, identification of nine sites located across Berlin, Montpelier, and Barrie. Uh, Berlin had the most of uh, the three towns with five sites identified. Uh, of the initial nine sites, uh, three were identified for a more com comprehensive analysis. So on this screen is a, a breakdown of the operating costs between the three finalist sites. Um, those are the Shed Road property uh, owned by the town of Berlin, a, uh, as well as a roughly 25 acre uh, lot on Kane Turnpike North and a three acre parcel on uh, Industrial Lane. The Industrial Lane property was eliminated after the concept design stage. Uh, it was discovered that the required setbacks associated with that property would shrink the usable space down to what is needed for GMT to fully support our long-term property needs. So the area, of, one of the area, one of the areas of evaluation was uh, deadhead costs and uh, the impact on our operating costs from the uh, future site. Uh, so our consultants looked at uh, performed a deadhead analysis of uh, of uh, going to to and from uh, all the routes uh, that we would serve from the facility, Shed Road and uh, the Payne Turnpike North property. Uh, we're both very similar in uh, the anticipated total uh, operating costs, and both offered savings over our offer potential savings over our current facility. And you'll also see the industrial lane property that was um, eliminated from consideration was uh, fairly signif fairly significantly higher uh, than the other uh, three. So the um, evaluation of the three sites looked at multiple areas, including site access, development costs, land use co compatibility, environmental impacts, wetland floodplain issues, uh, impacts on the operating costs, uh, as the previous slide indicated, uh, tax roll impacts, and mission statement consistency, which is essentially how well does the site offer us to be able to meet our goals uh, in the area to, to serve the public. Uh, each factor was weighted zero to one uh, based on relative importance to the study and to our long-term needs. You'll see the Payne Turnpike North and Shed Road property both scored very highly, uh, very favorably in the, in the analysis uh, and both offered significant improvement over our current facility. So on this slide, you see a, a concept design uh, prepared by our consultant. Yes. A question. Do you want me to wait till the end or do you want me to speak up? Uh, you can ask it now. That's fine. It was about the it was about the tax roll on the on the previous slide. Yes. Uh, they were uh, opposite ends of the spectrum. And I'm I'm curious why that is. Is I don't understand the, the difference in the impact. Uh, so the shed road property being owned by the town of Berlin. Um, would mean that a, a potential acquisition by GMT would not remove any property from the tax roll, whereas the other sites are privately owned and a sale would be re a sale to GMT being a nonprofit tax exempt organization would uh, remove those uh, properties from the tax roll in the town. Okay, thank you. So the concept design, this is a, uh, this is more of an exercise than anything. This isn't a final proposed uh, site layout, um, but this does give a sense of um, space use by GMT uh, on the uh, proposed parcel. 
Um, it, you'll also see on this, this uh, on the concept design, this has a proposed access from the neighboring property, the uh, Traveler Service Center next door. Um, the current access to the property off of Shed Road uh, does propose pose some challenges given the uh, volume of bus traffic that would be used over that road. Um, so it's in all of our, it's in our best interest to at least explore alternative access. This seems to be the most feasible. Uh, we have not uh, ha yet had discussions with the neighboring property about this access, um, but we plan to in the future. Um, this way, this also involves a, a redesign of their current uh, entrance into the into the property. I, so I have another question. Sorry. Yeah. Um, look, looking at the previous picture, uh, knowing what we know about the travel center, um, it, it, it looks like it would effectively take out the berm behind the travel center. Is that right? I, I don't believe the berm is in this particular location. I believe the berm is further south from here. Okay. But that is, uh, we are aware of the berm um, between the properties and uh, that is definitely something that we will uh, continue to, to look into. So our next steps, uh, we, we are gonna work with our consultants to continue to evaluate the development possibilities at both of the finalist sites. Uh, we are working with, uh, we are securing an appraisal, um, uh, an appraiser to uh, perform appraisals on both sites to establish the fair market value. Uh, that's something that we would be required being a recipient of uh, federal funds to have uh, if we were to um, go move ahead with a property acquisition. Um, we're going to continue discussions with the property owners uh, regarding acquisition possibilities at each, at each site. And we are also identifying uh, NEPA process activities that would be needed at either site and working with our consulting team to make a final recommendation uh, to the GMT Board of, Board of Commissioners. Are there any other any other questions? Um, uh, can everyone hear me? My name's Randy Legue. Yes. So Go ahead, Randy. I'm. Uh, is it now's the time to talk or ask a make a statement? I yep. guess. So we became aware. I'm one of the owners of the adjoining property that has the uh, picture drawn through, and uh, this was brought to our attention last Friday, and I can assure you that we will not allow that to happen. We've gone through what we went through with Act 250 to get this through the traffic studies and everything, that access will not change. Well, so, so I would say from GMT's perspective, that's obviously a major consideration uh, in this shed road site. Um, we did work with VTRANS to see if access on the 62 was feasible. Um, they said it was not. so. Um, that will certainly be a consideration as we move forward. We, we are not done with the study, so this is all preliminary at this point. Okay. But that's certainly I, good information to have. Yeah, I was unsure who would have directed you to draw it on our property, but it's, it won't, we, we can't do it and we won't do it. It was mostly an exercise to try and find an alternative to Jed Road. Um, okay, I just, I mean, I don't want to, come out uh, 11th hour, um, which occurs sometime in permit. I want to go right up. Uh, we appreciate the feedback now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. I, I do, I do question why you couldn't go out, go out, go out the, the shed road, 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 road that's there in Nanwell, though. That's there in Nanwell, though. I'm sorry, there was I'm a lot sorry, of echoing lot going of on. Echoing going on. If, let me mute. Let me mute. And uh, if and you could uh, ask, if you, if you could repeat your question, that'd be your question. That'd be great. Cool. All right. Is the echo right. gone? Is the echo gone? It appears. It appears. 
It's I, I'm wondering why, why, you, why you need a new entrance, entrance if there's an entrance going out shed row on the turbine. turbine. Anyway. John, you're still John, you've still you're got quite an echo. Quite an echo. <laughs> Excuse me, it's who's well, everyone else. Oh. Including Tom, including Vince. Yes. Can we? Can you go out on the turn? Can you go out on the turn? Uh, paint turnpike from Shed Row Road, then, rather than cutting across uh, the travel center. Is there a reason you wouldn't use the road that's already there? Primary concern um, would be the volume of bus traffic going past our residential properties, um, some of which being close to the road there. Uh, not sure if it's a deal breaker, it's just a consideration for that property. Got it, thank you. Are there any other questions? Why, uh, or why aren't you um, thinking of uh, expanding the building there where you are now? We've been told that we cannot do that because of its location in the floodplain. Um, we had, uh, in, during Hurricane Irene, we had a major flood at the property that caused a significant amount of damage. Uh, we received FEMA funds uh, it, in, uh, as a result of that. And uh, my understanding is that we, any, any uh, construction or renovation to that facility has to be done on the existing footprint of the buildings that are already there. This is Dave also, Sawyer. Go ahead. I can wait. Sorry. Uh, there's also the issue of um, there is no uh, city sewer to that current property. Um, the property deposits into a leach field and uh, due to changes to Department of Environmental Conservation, they no longer allow uh, maintenance floor drains or bus washing, at bus wash wastewater to deposit into leach fields. So that's another challenge with the site. We've worked with our neighboring properties to try and um, advance a project to bring city sewer to that area. That project looks like it's at least a couple of years out if it even uh, is feasible. This is Dave right, Sawyer. You. Just uh, real quick, Brad, uh, being a part of on the board of Weston's co-op at the same time that we've been working on that to uh, bring that sewer line down there for a couple of years to help out VTrans and to help out the park. But that's something that uh, because of the income requirements and stuff here and studies and stuff that needs to be done is, is another reason why that, that line's probably minimally a few years even from, from even being a possibility. And that's that septic, septic uh, line from the city uh, going past Weston's into that, that uh, V-Trans building. Thank you, Dave. Do we have any other questions? So, so was there in this initial thing for the shed road thing? Is there any reason why uh, they wouldn't, fall, you know, continue on that road other than the possibilities, the upgrade and the traffic to by the residential homes there? Is that going to be a uh, something that would eliminate? this site from being considered? I think it's too early to tell. Um, I think knowing that the uh, access from the server service center is a likely no-go, um, I think we need to take a closer look at uh, whether the shed road can be done. Uh, that might involve more um, outreach with neighboring properties. I'm, I'm not totally sure what that will entail. Looking at that drawing, is that the access between the Comfort Inn and the the Maplewood uh, complex? Is that is that where that is actually where you're showing that? 
Yeah, so this would actually be off of the current entrance into the service center. This is proposing a redesign of that. And then there would be another, the, there would be an extension of that access back to the uh, town of Berlin property behind there. Okay. All right, thank you. Anything else? All right. Thank you for your time, gentlemen. Yeah, thank you. And we'll keep you guys updated as uh, things progress. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have Good Samaritan presentation. Uh, yeah. He hello, this is Rick DeAngelis. I'm just waiting for the uh, share screen to end. Hello, everybody. Um, uh, I'm Rick DeAngelis, and I'm the executive director of uh, Good Samaritan Haven, and I'm here tonight with uh, Julie Curtin and Nicola Anderson. Uh, they're from uh, Downstreet Housing and Community Development. Uh, Downstreet is partnering with Good Sam to help us acquire the Twin City Motel and develop it as a service-enriched emergency housing option for individuals who are homeless. Uh, I also want to um, mention that uh, Sue Minter, who is the executive director of Capstone Community Action, and I believe Mary Moulton is also here. Uh, she's from Washington County Mental Health, uh, Mental Health Services. You know, Good Sam is taking the lead on this project, but it's truly a, a collective effort of the, of the service community. So um, we're, we're gonna make our comments pretty short um, and then open it up to, for your questions. Uh, but our intention is to highlight some features of our plan. And, um, and I also very specifically, we're requesting your approval of the project. You know, we're applying for state funds to operate it so that we have, you know, the sufficient funding for staffing and to pay our fair share of taxes. And one of the requirements of that of that uh, process to the state of Vermont is that the local community has to to sign off on the request. Uh, so I'll begin with a few comments to supplement the fact sheet that we included in your project, and hopefully that will also create some context for you what this is all about. You know, the COVID pandemic has underscored a problem that's been growing for a long time, and that's the number of homeless people in Washington County. Uh, right now, there are about 350 individuals in Washington County. We're second only to Chittenden County among the counties and the number of people who are homeless. And those folks are living in motels like the Hilltop Inn. Um, and they're living in shelters. We've got some shelter beds, a few shelter beds, and, and many of them are living outside. And I'm sure you know that Berlin has been a community where many homeless people have been living outside uh, in recent years. You know, the know-how and the resources exist to help these folks get connected and back into housing that really works for them. However, it does take time and it takes some tr transitional steps uh, to, to, to make that reconnection possible. And that's what this project is all about. It's to provide a very short term structured emergency housing program to help homeless individuals get connected to long term housing options. You know, I want to point out we're not just we're not just bringing this to, to the town of Berlin. Our, our efforts, efforts to address the, the problem. We've got three other housing sites uh, that we're planning uh, this year, uh, located in Barry City, Barry Town, and the city of Montpelier as well. And having, the, having a few different options is really important. It helps us to, you know, to carefully screen individuals and make sure that we've got the right setting for them. And, and so that we can immediately relocate people who aren't, who aren't working out in one of the settings. You know, our goal at Quin Twin City and these other sites is to make places like the Hilltop and unnecessary. 
we know that hasn't been a good thing for the for the town of Berlin. Uh, these motels may have made sense as an emergency response, but as you know, they are very difficult to manage and they're unproductive environments for the people who are there. We want to end the reliance the state has had on the motel voucher system. It doesn't work in the long run. So at this point, I wanna turn it over to Julie and Nicola to make a few comments about the actual physical site and why we think it can be a good site for us. Great, thank you, Rick. And, um, and thank you all for this time on your agenda this evening. Um, I just wanted to start by saying Downstreet is proud to be partnering with Good Sam on this project. Um, we see it as a vital project to respond to the, um, to the need for housing that Rick just outlined um, so um, eloquently. We, the Twin City Motel project is part of a, a vision that we have to provide high quality housing for all of our neighbors. And we think that the Twin City project is important to pro provide shelter to some of our most vulnerable neighbors, which is why we're so proud to be a part of it. Um, I would like to also highlight that we um, are at a moment in time when um, our funders for affordable housing development have more funds than they have traditionally had. And we have a unique opportunity right now to apply for one-time funding to do um, a project like this. So we, we, really, um, we really had to jump in and uh, seize the moment here to, to do this. Um, to give you a, a picture to go with that vision, I'd like to ask Nicola to speak to some of the design elements that we have planned for Twin City. Thanks, Julie. Thanks, Rick. So along with this one-time funding, this gives us the opportunity to acquire a development project like this, but also to make sure and develop this project so it's up to ample safety code and we're putting in measures that really um, extend the use of this property. We planned on sprinkling each of the buildings. We plan on not using just a normal lock and key system, but like a key fob system. So the behind the scenes, good Sam can lock people out if necessary. We're also make, gonna make sure that this, all three buildings are energy efficient. Uh, we're partnering with Efficiency Vermont, but we also have an architect and construction manager so that we are decreasing the operational costs of the building. We are also providing ample spaces um, for staff and partners to support the residents and provide many different types of resident, uh, many different types of services. There'll be ample spaces in the current house. Um, and there's also gonna be spaces down where the motel is, including a space for a staff member to stay and reside 24 seven. So there will be someone there overnight as well. Um, we've also met with, G with GMT and VTrans to place a bus stop on the site. Um, so this will also allow um, the residents to access other services and job opportunities. And we spoke about another shuttle service going through the site to also provide transportation to Barry and Montpelier. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up with just a closing comment that um, I, I hope this has been informative. I know it's been brief, but uh, your time is limited. Um, in addition to the fact sheet that we included in your package, there are also building plans and the uh, certifi uh, approval certification that I referred to. And there's one other thing, and that's a sample of quotes from uh, organizations like Capstone and Washington, Washington County Mental Health Services, CVMC, and a number of residents of Berlin. And you know, there's one person that, who didn't give me a quote, and I, I was hoping he would be here tonight, and that's uh, your, your police chief, uh, um, James Pomprion. I, I, I spoke with him several times, and, um, and uh, I, I, I my sense was he said he was supportive of the project. I guess you can ask him that yourself directly, but um, we've had a very good working relationship with him and we think that can continue in this location. Uh, so, so with that, I'll, I'll close up, close out and, um, and we're welcome to address any of your questions.
I have a quick question. Um, I'm just curious. You said, you know, obviously the Hilltop Inn, some of these other hotels throughout the state are impacting the towns. I'm curious if you've done any sort of local impact study on how this will impact Berlin, having it permanently placed there and, and what will happen. I, I, we have not done a study. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what to say about that. We're going to do all that we can so that we're not drawing on your uh, on your services. And, um, you know, right from the get go, as we looked at this, I felt like we had to pay taxes to the town. We don't want to be a drain. We want this to work. And um, and if we can and if we can make and if we can make the hilltop unnecessary, I, perhaps in the long run we can actually save you some money. Does the board have any other questions? Yeah, I have a question. I'm I'm looking for our uh, April statement if you'd bear with me for just a second so so rick i guess you know one of my one of my concerns is is that is a, a significant draw on the taxpayers of berlin um and while i of course can't find the sheet at the very moment that we're we're talking even though i had it up uh we're talking about you know increases of 150 to 200 um, percent on our budget with the primary reason um, and I'm speaking specifically about the police department budget um, about the calls to the Hilltop Inn um, and I'm worried I guess and I'm looking for some assurance um, that you know there's going to be some kind of supplemental payment or some kind of way to to work this out with uh, um, you guys before the project goes forward. I mean, the the taxpayers of Berlin can't can't afford these types of increases for one specific location. Um, in conversations uh, with management, it looks like we could potentially put a full time staff full-time police officer, one or two people at the Hilltop Inn and keep them busy 100% of their 40 hour week. You know, that that's concerning as, as someone that's um, trying to look at, you know, our town holistically and make sure that not only are we providing services to all people, but um, that um, things that are coming in aren't going to drain our our response to be able to be a uh, community that is diverse and offers opportunity. I, I hear you, you're concerned about that. I, I, you know, I'm, it may be difficult for us to make an additional payment beyond the taxes. I budgeted it at a full tax payment. And, um, you know, I wanna say we are not the Hilltop Inn. Uh, I, I believe that we're the opposite of the Hilltop Inn. Uh, we're very familiar with what it's been like up there. Uh, it's a very large scale. Uh, the owners, um, I don't know what to say, but uh, their interest isn't getting people out of there or providing services. Um, they have tried to maximize, um, you know, and fill every room and keep, keep people in there even when they're not, you know, they're not, uh, it's, it's best not to have them there. So, um, I, you know, we are not going to be the Hilltop Inn. And I think if you look at our track record uh, in Barrie, we've been there 35 years. And um, uh, we have relatively few calls. Uh, we work very well with the emergency services there. And, um, uh, and in fact, the location in Barrie, it's, um, that's what we call a low barrier shelter in Barrie. We pretty much accept anybody there. That's not going to be the case at the Hilltop Inn. Uh, it's going to be a drug-free and alcohol-free environment. And, um, and we will be screening people for their suitability. So I wish I could offer you more. I wish I could offer you a supplemental payment. Um, 
I think it's going to be difficult or impossible for us to do that. Rick, what kind of staffing would you have on site there? Uh, well, I mean, we how, would, how would you how would you be uh, sort of mitigating this yourself then? Right. Yeah. Uh, well, the, uh, our, that will be our main location for all of our staff, uh, including our housing case management staff, our administrative staff. So, uh, we will be there a lot. We'll have a major presence there in the house. And uh, in addition to that, uh, we're always going to have somebody on the location, even overnight. Uh, they'll be awake uh, and they'll be there holidays, et cetera, et cetera. So our main focus is to keep it safe for the residents and to keep it safe for our staff. Being familiar with what you guys have done in Barry for a number of years, uh, I think you're doing a great job. And and with you guys having uh, staff that's going to be on on all the time with a with an interest, I think it's a lot better than uh, what we're dealing with at the hilltop. Uh, where that's purely a monetary, uh, they're looking at that purely on a monetary basis. Uh, and I appreciate what you're doing there. This is Dave Sawyer on the select board. Yeah, and, and Rick, to be clear, I'm, I'm not trying to place blame on any owners or you know anyone. I just wanna make sure whatever we put in place um, doesn't result in some of these things that we're seeing now. I mean. As I said, police department overtime is at 227% of what was budgeted and their full time is at 183%. So a lot of that is attributed to what's going on over there. And I just, I'm looking for reassurance more than payment um, that you guys are gonna do all you can to make sure that uh, the, the housing is a respectful place for people that wanna get back on their feet. Justin, just to jump in real quick. I'm sorry, this is Vince. We've got a couple of people with uh, some raised hands that also would like to ask some questions. We've got Sue Minter, then Mary Moulton, and then uh, Keith. I don't have a question. I did want to just offer um, a perspective, which is to really first start with the distinction between what's happening at the hilltop and what is being proposed to you today. The hilltop is a location for people receiving vouchers from the state who are going without a management system, without a plan, without really a safe uh, and, and respectful environment. And what uh, Good Sam is proposing is something quite the opposite, the antidote almost, because what we, uh, and, and Good Sam uh, works with a group, a collection of service providers, including Capstone Community Action, and our part of this is trying to get people from insecure housing or shelter into secure housing and help support them in that journey. Uh, we work with landlords, we work with tenants, um, and we are working together feverishly, frankly, to help make sure that when people are exiting those hotels, we're gonna get them into a safer situation. We've been working since the beginning of the pandemic as a team, the collection, we call it the homeless response team. And um, you'll hear from Mary Moulton as well. But the point is we have a vision of, to your point, respectful and careful housing opportunities. We tried uh, valiantly to purchase a hotel earlier in the COVID pandemic uh, unsuccessfully. Um, uh, Rick has been charting a course um, we hope that you can uh, support this. And we know we're asking a lot of you uh, because your experience is hearing the unfortunate and unfortunate to hear the expense to your taxpayers experience of this, uh, what's happening at the hilltop. And we're working to change that. So we don't have to send unhoused people to motels through the GA program. But in fact, we have a um, program where we have a hub, what we call a hub of support of mental health, housing case management, all of the support working with the shelter. So this is part of our vision. And I just wanna say, we, work, we hope you will partner with us because we truly believe that at the other end of this pandemic, and we really see that light shining now, we don't go back to a place where there's nowhere to go for people, but you know, in the shadows or in your parking lots. 
where there's actually a place where people can look to their future, where we can support them in their journey to safe housing. And that's the goal of this. I think that it's in a location that is not residential. Um, we are committed to safety and security and hopefully a really different future. And we, we really hope you can support us. And we are, it's not just Good Sam, it's a whole collection of housing support, social service providers that are, are really working uh, to be a partner with you if you're able to support us. And we hope that you will. And thanks so much for your consideration. Justin, we also have uh, Mary Moulton and then Keith Van Eiderston. Excellent. Go ahead. Some questions. Hi, thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks so much for hearing Rick tonight. And I'm one of those partners and I am the executive director of Washington County Mental Health Services. So uh, we've partnered with the shelter for a really long time. And I just wanted to throw in here, um, you know, that uh, the work that the shelter has done under Rick's leadership has just been excellent. And we um, have a person that works closely with the shelter um, and this hub idea that Sue is mentioning will bring in more people to work with this group of folks that will be living and receiving support so we can hopefully get them into housing. But um, we work closely with Chief Pompriam too because we have a 24 seven response team. And I just, I just wanna acknowledge the Hilltop has been hard um, you know, it, it is really state taking people off the streets during the pandemic and everybody went in and it, it, it felt very, very overwhelming. And at times we've tried to get a better handle on it by providing supports and services, but we just know that unless we get a situation where we could have the shelter do what they do so well, um, by providing the supports 24 seven and us bringing in our additional ancillary supports for emergency services, case management, peer supports, that we're not going to fix the problem and people are gonna be out on the streets. Um, I know because I've met with Chief Pompreon on his numbers that um, you know a lot of those calls are out in the community because people are leaving you know, the hotels, they've come from everywhere. Uh, we've talked with other chiefs, chiefs about vetting. Um, they've just come from everywhere. These people that Rick will take into the Twin City will be people that he is working to know the background um, for and will all work to get them housed. So um, again, thanks for hearing it. And just as a, another group that does response and 24 seven response, we felt it and we can't wait for something like this to help us to turn the situation around. Thank you. Thank you, Keith, go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, Rick. This is Keith Adonerstein, Chief of the Berlin Fire Department. I have a couple of questions. Um, mm -hmm. This is a, a new proposal to me. How many residents do you plan on being able, having the new facility being able to host? A total of 35, that would be the maximum. That's eight, 18 rooms, but with a capacity of 35. Okay, and how long would their stays be for? Uh, 30 days or less. And I, I understand that you're gonna be retrofitting the buildings instead of rebuilding? Yes, uh, it will be uh, rich with uh, safety features, including sprinklers, and hardware, smoke alarms. Um, the, the buildings weren't in bad shape, but they definitely needed updating and um, uh, in many ways, and we'll be doing that. Is it gonna have a called in fire detection system too? I have to ask Nicola that question. Nicola, you're on yeah, mute. Okay. I heard, I saw it, yes. Yeah, it will. Um, and I understand that you're, the good Sam and Barry has a different clientele than you're going to have in this place but do you have an estimate as to the annual calls for service between police fire and ems that the barry shelter does keith i'd, I'd have to i'm sorry i don't have that with me tonight i didn't uh think to to get to to make that available or get it from um uh uh the chief in 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 barry city but okay. i'd be glad to, i'd be glad to follow up with you on that Okay, thank you. 
Any other questions? So you're uh, Brad Town on the select board. Uh, so basically, you're you're proposing more of a treatment center than a uh, than housing. Well, treatment is it's not a medical facility at all. It uh, it is housing, uh, uh, but the the emphasis is on uh, getting people the services they need to to reconnect them with with long term housing. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Keith, thanks for asking that question. I appreciate that. All right. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you for the update. Thank, Thank you, you all so much. Thank you. So, Rick, we do need this document signed. Could you give us a, I mean, again, we do have a very specific need and um, um, I'm wondering if you'd either be willing to take that up tonight or, or tell us how we might get an answer on that because it, we had, it's a, it's really a um, crucial step in our process. Was it this uh, cert certification of local government approval form? Yes. Yes. I believe that would be handled by the, uh, by the uh, either the development the developmental review board, right? Vince, are you available, Tom? Actually, um, it what it what it is is uh, and correct me, Rick, if I'm wrong. It's just the the an approval of the municipality um, regarding the project moving forward. Uh, that's correct. We are going through your development review process, and so. You know, we'll have to get our permit approvals. Uh, that's not that form isn't signing off on that by any means. Uh, it's 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 signing off on the uh, receipt of uh, funds to operate the project. It, there, and again, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Rick, but it's it's basically the the board's approval for them to move forward in order to obtain federal uh, funding for their project. Right. So one of the, some of the questions that we don't have answers exactly to are the, the impact is, I mean, is the board have, feel like they have enough of their questions answered to say, we authorize this, we think it's a good idea. I mean, what's the board's thoughts on this? I, this is Dave Sawyer, I, you know, Personally, I'm in support of this project and, and how, how it would run. And ultimately, I would not have a problem with it, uh, seeing as it has more oversight than the Barry uh, facility. Um, uh, but I do believe, I think, I think first and foremost is to have, have what numbers that the Barry, you know, the, to, the, you know, to get the questions answered that Keith asked uh, before I'd be willing to make any motion myself. All right, thank you, Dave. Any other feedback, Brad, John, Flo? Uh, would, would you be open to us coming back to you at your next meeting after I give Keith that information and um, uh, so that we could hopefully have a vote on, on, that, on that certification? I would be more inclined to, instead of answering Keith, just send the uh, information to Vince and let him distribute it. Right. So the board will have it. Okay. Yeah. Also, you can get it to Keith. Um, personally, I have no, I have no objections to the, uh, to the use of the uh, motel as uh, what you're proposing. And I'm in agreement as well. But I do think we need to have the, the numbers in front of us. I agree with that. John, do you have any feedback? No, I think the way uh, Rick, Rick described what they're going to do and the way it's going to be run, it sounds like um, they have a well-structured plan in place. Um, I would like to see Keith's questions answered as well, but um, outside of that, I'm, I'm okay with it. Okay. 
So why don't we why don't we do this? We'll get get those questions answered. You'll send those off to the board, and we'll add you to the next agenda. Great. Thank you very much. We really appreciate the uh, time and the consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank yes, you. thank you for what you guys do. Thank you. Okay. All right, next up we have personnel policy revision approval. John, I believe we waited on this uh, because you were absent at the last meeting. Um, well, not the last meeting, the, the last regularly scheduled Monday meeting. Um, so One of the last three meetings. <laughs> uh, but we definitely didn't want to move forward without a full board if we could avoid it. So thank, thank, you, for, thank you for being here this evening. Um, have you looked at the, uh, have you looked at the personnel policy at all? Please tell me yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, how does the board feel about moving forward with that? I would move to approve the uh, changes to the personnel policy. I'd second. second. All right. Uh, any discussion? All right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. I had a quick oh, go ahead. I had a quick question. Uh, what were the for for the people on on in TV land? What were the major uh, revisions between the old policy and the new policy? Vince, we added the. Sorry, go ahead, Justin. No, I was just going to ask you to go ahead, Vince. Oh, okay, we we added the uh, the section regarding uh, temporary work. So bringing people back, um, mainly around the, the, the police force, uh, to, uh, but in general, to bring people back to work at a limited duty status type of way. Uh, that whole section was added in this revision. The rest of it were minor, uh, cleaning up the, uh, some of the, uh, the language To make it a little more clear, but that was the biggest addition uh, that we that would we were asked to to revise it to. I can tell you. Are you still looking? For good. I just wanted to make sure everyone kind of understood what we did there. Yep. Any additional discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Excellent. All right, fire department liaison discussion and report. Uh, I know we have Keith on. Uh, Dave will be talking about it. Is, uh, is Joe on as well? Okay. Yes, I am. Oh, there you are. Um, so this, I wanted to, to start having a liaison discussion for each department, uh, even though you guys aren't a municipal department, you're crucial to the structure of this community. Uh, obviously you play a huge role. And I think that moving forward in order to best serve Berlin's population, we need to make sure everybody's working as closely as they can. Uh, we had asked for a couple of different things to occur. Um, and I, I don't know if, uh, Dave, you want to speak to it at all, but at our last meeting, we, we discussed a couple of things that we wanted to ask of the fire department. Um, and we also wanted to, to have a quick discussion on how we could also maybe additionally support you. And I, I wanted to, uh, just touch base and see where we're at with those, uh, Dave, you want to take over and talk about the specifics? Well, you know, we're still in the early stages. Uh, I know that uh, Keith and Joe both have worked uh, a lot of hours in and real hard. And, and Keith is putting this uh, some some numbers together or this study together for you. Uh, something that started before I was on there uh, on the board. I think they're doing a, a you know a really good job. Um, you know, they've got some obstacles that they've got to overcome, and I'm hoping that we can help them uh, 
uh, do that with some ordinances, uh, you know, on some nuisance alarms and some other stuff. I know Keith, uh, Keith, uh, I'll, I'll let him speak to this study, uh, you know, what you asked for before, you know, I was on the board. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think at this time, I don't really have a lot to add. Uh, I've got a lot of numbers that uh, uh, Jerry, uh, I can't ever pronounce his last name, but he supplied me with some numbers. And I'm yep. looking at those as, as, as it goes. Uh, and, and uh, you know, I'll let Keith speak to this uh, study, that uh, feasibility study. All right. So there was a couple of different things. First, we wanted the, the clarification on roles and responsibilities. And I just wanted to make that a little bit more publicly known so that the community understood uh, the structure of the fire department. The board understood the structure of the fire department, how it works. I know um, that can be sometimes uh, it can slow the process down um, or change how, how things operate. The second was uh, the merger study results. Uh, that we were looking for. And then we wanted to talk about uh, the potential for, uh, we had had a discussion about Berlin taking over some of the accounting. And then we wanted to talk about the false alarm or nuisance alarm ordinance. So Keith, go ahead and just, let's hit these one point at a time and we'll go from there. Absolutely. The first one I'll talk about is the, um, the potential merger study right now we're working with Corinne. We're doing a public um, survey that we're interested in getting feedback for the public about um, basically their thoughts and opinions of the current fire department and its level of service and such. We're, we have that prepared. We're working with Corinne to get it into her news to know. We're going to be posting it on Front Porch Forum at the same time. Um, and that should be going out extremely shortly. In July, we're going to be sending a draft of the report to the fire department itself for review. And then after the fire department review and um, internal clearance, let's call it, it will be going up to you. Okay, now is this, this study uh, geared around community perception? or is it geared around uh, growth and development of the fire department and how to, to, from the fire department's perspective, pros and cons, pros and cons to the municipality? Uh, what would you say the primary gearing of this survey study is that you're doing? We, we thought the community, the pros and cons for the fire department and the community perception were really um, go hand in hand and the community, the community involvement it was significant as far as the study and how we should be moving forward as a department um, because ultimately there are customers so okay now i know I, I i was starting to help with this so i'm just asking some questions um what 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 when do you think the town can anticipate seeing the results of this study well, like I said, it's going in front of the fire department in the beginning of July. Revision one month. So I would say in September timeframe, would you agree, Joe? Uh, excuse me, uh, what what was that time frame you said, Keith? September timeframe. I think that'll be easy enough. Um, that The survey, the draft has been uh, put out to a select few. We kind of um, did a once over. I believe that it'll be going out to the community in the next few days. Um, I believe we're going to have that out for about a month. Um, and then we'll be evaluating the results after that. Um, and then it's going to follow the timeline of which Keith just laid out for you. Okay. Thank you. Anything else on the, the study that you guys wish to share? I think that's about it at the moment. All right, we're eagerly anticipating that. Yeah. Um, so one of the things I thought would be useful for, for the other board members as well as the community, be, community would be for uh, clarification of, of 
the roles and and basically the structure of the fire department. Um, you know, being that I was liaison and on the board of directors there, I understood it, but there's still a little bit a little bit of slight confusion for me, probably because I wasn't on the fire department side as much. Um, can you go ahead and give a, like a 30 second, one minute overview of the structure of the fire department so that the board understands how it operates? You mean basically the board of director structure? Just the, you have the board of directors. You also have the, what's the other board? The okay. Yeah. Corporation. So, you've yeah, got. No. Understood. The fire department is a, in, technically an independent nonprofit corporation from the town. And as you know, you know, we ask for our funding once a year at the uh, uh, town meeting day. <clears throat> we have two sides to the fire department. One is that corporation, which is the, the, uh, the management of the the finances and the the day-to-day -day stuff like that then we have the fire department fire ground side which is where we take care of the uh the, the calls for service the fire calls the preparedness of the department the department training for the fire calls and that's in my purview as the chief joe as the president of the corporation runs the different boards such as the uh, board of directors and any other subcommittees that we have like membership or committees to help maintain the truck so on and trucks so on and so forth um, that's that's the basic structure the board of directors itself is comprised of a nine member board seven of them are fire department officers corporation officers the fire chief two of them are public members one is appointed as a select board member for by the select board and the other is appointed by the select board as a gen, general public member who uh jerry diem and TDs is in that position and those are advisory positions to provide input and liaison between the select board and ourselves uh, get the select board's opinion on on issues going on with the department as and <clears throat> keep closer in touch keep keep a be a lot work a lot better working relationship than before we had those positions and over the years it's been a number of years since what about seven joe since we've done that it's probably been at least seven. And I, I think in that time frame, we have developed a lot better working relationship with the town select board because of that. So. Joe, do you have anything to add? Um, I don't know if it was all that clear with, with the board of directors and those two uh, non-corporate members. They, they are voting members of that board. So. Right. Yeah. Does does the board have any questions for as far as the overall structure of the fire department and how it operates? Nope. Okay. Um, one of the one of the things that I believe the fire department has been experiencing um, is a, a, a fairly significant number of what what I think they would refer to as nuisance alarms. Mm -hmm. um, which is an added expense, um, obviously, to, to the department. So the board has adopted a, a nuisance alarm policy. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, Vince. Um, but I, I feel like it's time for us to, to, to navigate a way to be able to support the fire department in enforcing this policy. I, I, I am not overly familiar with it. I have looked at it, Justin, since the last meeting. Um, so I'll, I'll get into deeper detail and get a better understanding of it this week. Okay. Now, from the fire department perspective, do you have any idea of what it would take for support from the municipality uh, at this point to support you in enforcing that policy? So that policy, my understanding was it was created as an ordinance with, in combination with the, uh, 
police department for security alarms as well. Being that we're a separate organization than the town, it's it was unclear to me how the inf who was responsible for the enforcement and how it was to be where was the stick how is it to be enforced um <clears throat> and that's been a question that i think we need to to sort out and hammer out and possibly if we need to revise the ordinance um get that taken care of tom's on here he might be able to speak to that i believe we had some discussion around enforcement of policies or uh, ordinances and or maybe events can as well um but we can always appoint somebody uh to enforce those for us so you could be acting on behalf of the town i believe if i'm not mistaken I we've see been ha yeah. Go ahead. yeah we've been having discussion at the uh staff meeting level for last couple months uh about best ways to to proceed uh along those lines so i think there's we've got some good conversation going here in in the in the office it's just now um uh doing a doing an evaluation and bringing something to the select board for your review and approval okay is there any way that we could loop uh either joe and keith or, or one of them in on some of these dialogues so that they could be you know brought up to speed i'll, I'll share with those guys the the videos that we've been we've been uh, uh watching thank you tom excellent Thanks, I appreciate that. Uh, is yeah, Diane's still on here. Diane, we had talked potentially about being able to help the fire department with some of their their book work. Is that still, do you think, um, something we can look at now that we've got our new town administrator? I do think it's something we can look at. I'm I would appreciate it if we could start it in September, just because we're coming into my busiest time of year. Okay. Okay. So do you want to do you want to bring the discussion back up in September? Do you want to talk a little bit more about what their needs are? Or did you get all your answers when we spoke before? I uh, I would like to speak more about what their needs are, and I think I could talk with okay. Keith and Joe about that just to see exactly what they do need from me, and then we can go from there. Okay, can you guys share that with Diane so that we can get everybody up to speed there, and then we can start looking at it in, in September? Absolutely, sure. Okay. Thank you. Uh, do you guys have anything else from the needs of the fire department or uh, concerns or anything like that you'd like to bring to the board's attention? Um, I think getting the um, your plan of having us do a regular update at a meeting meetings with you as with the other boards is a very good idea and I, I support it. One of the things I think that Joe and I were wondering is what type of information on a regular updates are you looking for from us? Great question. Um, I think number one would be probably some concerns uh, for the taxpayers and the boards about maybe activity. I think that's, you know, calls, uh, probably, you know, responded calls, what type of calls. Uh, calls that may have come in that were unresponded. John, we'll get to you in a minute. I see your hand up. Um, calls that came in that were unresponded to. Um, that's obviously a big concern. Uh, go ahead, John. Are we talking just about the nuisance calls or in general updates? In general updates, everything. Uh, what, do, yeah. what do we need? know about the fire department to, to better understand how they operate and what their needs are yeah for, for me it, it's staffing concerns number of calls you're going on and budget to actual just writing board, a few notes on it does the board have any other questions Okay. I mean, Keith, I think since we're sort of starting this, this is relatively new and we haven't been doing it on a consistent basis. Uh, some of these things may be subject to a little bit of change, but the general idea is 
Uh, we'd like to know how you're operating, what kind of coverage levels we have, uh, how we can support you, and obviously, in turn, that reflects on how you're supporting us as a town, being that you're independent. Correct. Good. That's a good um, good basis to start from, and obviously, we'll be adjusting that as we develop this. So. And also, I mean, you guys, you guys are the ones operating the professionals there. Maybe you have some, some information or some ideas of things that you think you should share with us. I don't know. Yep. Well, Joe and I will, will look at that. We were, <clears throat> I think that's a, a good starting point right there. Uh, one of the things I would probably put in there is maybe some general training update just to <clears throat> so you'd understand how our level of training is. That would, yep, probably in an active roster, like volume. You know, that, that might not be a bad idea. Okay. As in roster numbers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how many, how many people do we have? So, so if you respond to a call, is it one person, you know, you know, if you, if you get a call and you respond, it's different probably if you have one person than if you have 10. Right. Just thinking. So that, so that's probably some relative information as well. Okay. Um, and then also I think, you know, the board might be interested in, in hearing how you plan to uh, you know, I mean, we'll get the results of this, this, this merger, potential merger survey, whatever. Um, but but how you plan on supporting the town as the town grows? I mean, we're looking at some significant development, and mm -hmm. I think that goes in hand. You know, maybe what is your, where do you see the department? What's your department's plan as it stands today? Five years, ten years, fifteen years? How are you going to do that? Because with all of the development that's going to go on, I don't think it's fair to burden our residents with any additional expense. I think a lot that should all be able to be covered by the uh the development that is a major portion of the study that we're looking at right so i'd like to know you know when we get those results a little bit more detail on how you plan to address that okay. as we move forward anything else gentlemen joe keith you're all set i appreciate your time thank you for joining us this evening so thanks very much Thank you. Thank you, John Keith. I appreciate you. All right. We have uh, Brookfield Road signage parking and security discussion. What would you like to begin with? Uh, well, go ahead. <laughs> uh, so part, part of this is uh, tied in with the, uh, the ordinance that I'm working on with the chief as well, right? The speed limit. We've had a number of requests uh, due to safety concerns with the increased volume of traffic and the increased um, foot traffic as well uh, on there. Uh, so you'll see something from me later this week, uh, a complete package regarding that, including um, some recommendations uh, on parking uh, and signage uh, for that. Um, so basically we're looking at reducing the speed to 25. Um, reinforcing the, the, the no parking along Brookfield Road uh, with some signage as well, and perhaps a, a, a public hearing on that specific ordinance uh, due to the public interest on that as well. And um, adding some additional parking perhaps will be in the proposal as well. Uh, I measured uh, Payne Turnpike South uh, today, a couple of sections of that, where we could potentially uh, park safely. Uh, I spoke with Tim as well. I need to review it with the chief along the interstate side of Payne Turnpike South uh, to alleviate some of the uh, parking outside the designated areas on that little section in Brookville Road. So there's, there's one section of Payne Turnpike South that is uh, roughly 35 feet wide and there's over 1,500 feet in that straight section right there, given if you if you allowed 25 feet for a parking space there, you would have probably, you would have 
uh, between 50 and 60 parking spots right there alone in that straight section. And that would take a lot of pressure off, uh, especially when there's events and things as well, um, just from a parking perspective. The security portion, um, I'm sure everybody's aware, um, Justin, you had asked to have this on there because of an incident that we had recently had um, where there was a theft there. So uh, you right. may want to speak to that. Well, it was just a, a concern. Um, I don't, I don't under, I don't see how we could possibly put cameras in or anything like that. But we, we had a concern from from a per individual that thought maybe we should. So I wanted to just kind of see see what there's, but you know, like a, I think it was probably just a it was a broken window maybe or or not even a broken window. Uh, do you know if there was any vandalism involved in that vents or was it just somebody left their car unlocked? I think the car was unlocked. I'm not sure if they broke a window or not on that one. Uh, all I know is that there was, you know, our, there were contents taken out of her purse that was left on the seat. Um, and minutes later, the, they were being used at the mall. Uh, so, um, so not, I mean, I don't, I don't I think, know. You can't really police all of that. So, no, well, I think, again, with revising the ordinance, there will be increased patrolling going on there because we'll have an ordinance that they can enforce. Um, I think that will help as well. It'll certainly raise the awareness. And again, um, if there's more cars parked up on the interstate side of uh, Payne Turnpike, you know, there's there's a lot, there's not a lot, but there's more traffic and visibility there as well. Right. Anything else on this? Uh, not from my end. Again, the only thing is uh, I'll be getting a, a complete package with the engineering survey out, the recommended speed limit, uh, the number of signs that we'll we'll probably need to purchase and a proposal, but I need to review it now that the chief's back with him to get his buy-in and agreement from a safety standpoint that it makes sense. I've already talked to Tim on it as well, so. Excellent, Vince, I appreciate the update. Any further questions from the board? All right, conservation commission update on management plan and also discussion of the Black Road Bridge. Who do we have on from the conservation commission? Uh, both Phil and um, Wendy Lynn, I believe, are are right. with us right. tonight. All right, We're here. Ellen, Ellen also. And oh, yep, Ellen is here as well. I think Sister Lauren might be on also on the phone. Oh, right, I see her there. All right. Thanks for joining us. Uh, does the board has the board had an opportunity to review this this management plan? I see you shaking your head. Yes, John, Brad. I can't really see you, but yes, I looked. I looked it over. Is Dave Sawyer? I'm here. Any any concerns, comments, questions for the uh, the commission? This is Flo, I didn't have any questions. Thank you though. Honest. Yeah, I would, just, I, would just, I would just say looking at it um, in the way it was presented, uh, 150 ish signatures that Josh Walker received really wasn't brought up all that much. Instead, they talked a lot about the public input of, of a couple of surveys that very few people responded to. Um, I, I, you know, I still haven't seen the results for the second survey that went out. Maybe I missed it, but um, it would be nice if we could have all that raw data. I mean, af after all, uh, you know, it, it will help us inform our decision as a board on what we do. Can anyone from the Conservation Commission speak to that? I'm not sure what you're asking. Can you just re can you repeat which what you're missing? Um, Josh's information was in the report um, that we gave you, and I'm not sure which one is the second second survey. I, I think they're looking the for the question. one you did the survey on on Front Porch Forum. So there were there was three. There was the original survey, which was done way back at the beginning. That's in the report. 
And then there was a survey on current use in the winter and that was in the report. And then there was another um, survey of snowmobile users and that is in the report also. And Josh's uh, petition was also in the report. So we actually printed his petition. So so I, I'm, I'm unclear on what you're looking for. Well, actually, let's kind of just back up a little bit. Um, so as far as these management plans are concerned, uh, the this this draft from I'm looking at five six 2021. Um, and it's unclear. There's not a lot of direction as far as what changes or alterations have been made from the current plan. Um, is there any I think it might be useful for the board and for the community to be able to visually see the changes. I mean, is this all new language? What can you tell me where the changes and tell the board where the changes have been made to this the plan over the, the existing plan? So some of it's been reorganized. So there's not exactly a one to one correspondence to it. Um, the big probably the big bulk of it is we added the appendices at the end of it, which were not in the old um, plan. And let's just start it at the beginning. We fleshed out a little bit more information about property background. Um, I think we did a little bit of organization in section two, the plan objectives, just so it was clear what the objectives were. Um, section restricted uses of the property um let's see um we fleshed out number six the motor vehicle use portion of it um and added some appendices with information on that um permitted uses of the property um let's see I'm not sure we're putting changes into that section. Okay, so have you sent this this out to the community or I mean it seems like everything we've done so far has has involved some sort of community survey or study uh, based on what the the commission wants. Have you have you sent this out to as well for a study or a uh, community uh, it was um, put out front page for um, front porch forum, and I really haven't received a whole lot of feedback from the public on it. I've had a couple, maybe two or three emails, and everybody just said it looks good. Um, so it's not a whole lot of feedback. You know, I, I think it's it's a pretty people aren't really interested in reading this much of a document. Is well, my I, guess. I think it's probably a large document, and without kind of a I don't know if you sent a summary page or, or anything that would explain the, the significant differences or changes or alterations that were made to the management plan. I think that would be very useful. Um, I don't know what other, the main... what, other, what other questions the board may have about it. Um, but I, I think I think that would be probably provoke a better response from the community. What, is, what does the board think about that? Wendy, did we post it on the town website? Um, yes, we we yeah, gave it. It was posted on the town website. It wasn't perhaps labeled um, exactly to what it was. I think it was labeled as conservation document. Um, but it was posted out a couple of weeks. It was posted out right the same time that we gave it to you. And it was posted to Front Porch Forum at the same time also. Um, I mean, the biggest thing was probably in the recreational uses. I mean, what we were told to do is add snowmobiling in. So this is not a comprehensive update. This was um, adding the snowmobiles in. So I think recreational uses on um, snowmobiling is added in. There's a section, it was reorganized so you could see mountain biking clearly also. Um, in section four, um, there was a description a discussion on quarter managers, which would be um, Bass and also the mountain bike people. Um, and that's the big change. I mean, we were asked to put snowmobiles in, we've put snowmobiles in. Um, 
and we'll put information on the quarter management. And then in the appendix, the other probably important, really important part of that was um, when you get down to, just give me a second, I'm scrolling. I mean, I think snowmobiles uh, were already allowed in the other management plan. So I'm just curious. You said that was mainly around out. Well, in the other one, it just said at the discretion. It didn't really, it didn't um, put any, it said that they could be allowed. That's what it said before. So it didn't really give any information as far as um, what that would look like. So it, if when we edit it back, let me just scroll back up there. Um, so real specifically, um, snowmobiling is allowed only, there's a section that talks about one paragraph on um, snowmobiling uh, being on on the trails that are on the official bass trail map, um, only when open when the bass is open, the trails for snowmobile use. Um, all state laws will be enforced. Um, snowmobilers must ride in control, yield to non-motorized users. Non-motorized users need to move to the side of the trail. So, you know, both people need to watch for each other. Um, and speed, it says speed limit on the shared use um, is as posted. And when I talked to Dave Rouleau, basically he said he would put slow on there and he believes that people would slow down to an appropriate speed. So um, he didn't feel the need to, you know, specifically tell people how fast to go. He felt that people would go at appropriate speed. So that's the one paragraph on snowmobiling. If you come down into section four, the trail plan, um, there's a section on corridor managers, and that would be any organization who's managing a use in the town forest. Um, and at this time, it would be VAS for snowmobiles, and it would be NAMBA for mountain bikes. So this would apply to both of those groups. Um, and it, it fleshed out a little bit more about what corridor managers would do. Um, and what they're responsible for. So they're responsible for maintaining the trail, maintaining and repairing the trail, especially during the season it's being used. And they're also responsible for monitoring and enforcing of trail use and rules. Um, we would like to see a signed agreement with the quarter managers that sort of spells out, you know, what our responsibilities are, what their responsibilities are. And very similar to what Barry has over at Millstone. Um, so there's no question about who, you know, if you want, if they want to do maintenance, what's the process for doing maintenance? Who's responsible for permits? Um, it spells that out. And we, down in the appendix, there is a quarter management agreement that's sort of based on what Barry has going. Um, but that's just a draft for right now that needs to be reviewed um, to see if it's appropriate for Berlin. Um, and also it might, it might be good to run it quickly by some legal um, person just to make sure that we're covered for insurance and liability and that type of stuff. Um, and it well, looks like that's what Barry did also. So I think um, with, with the vast, we're gonna be that that makes sense that we want to make sure we're covered. My concern is if we're going to worry specifically about the snowmobiles uh, for liability and coverage, I feel like, do we, do we require insurance from Mamba? Um, we do not. I would think that that would be something we'd also want to have in there. Um, I would, you know, what happens if, uh, you know, somebody riding a mountain bike hits a pedestrian, vice versa. I mean, that, insurance companies bifurcate all the time. I would think that just because it's motorized doesn't mean it's necessarily any more of a liability. Uh, I would I would make sure that any of these clubs uh, that are gonna be participating in this management plan, any of this structured usage, uh, I, I would think that if we're gonna require that we have 
insurance or liability coverage from one, we would want to make it pretty standard across the board. So yeah. that would be some of my feedback. I don't really know what standard around the state, you know, as far as um, best, even if they set, sign a private property agreement, um, insures the landowner. Right. Um, I'm not sure what is standard around the state for mountain biking. Um, it may be different. So that would be a question. Well, I think that if I, I, I wouldn't necessarily, I mean, I think most of this project has been relatively uh, unstandard in comparison to what goes on around the rest of the state. Um, I, I think from a municipal standpoint and protection of our taxpayers, if we're going to allow structured club usage, we, we should probably make sure that there's liability protection there for the municipality. So somehow in here, I'd like to personally see reassurance that that's occurring. I don't know how the rest of the board feels. I can't speak for the board, but um, to me, we, we have a bunch of different recreational usages up there and, and the Mamba being the other, maybe more significant, well, the most significant club use or, or structured use at the time at this moment um who's also i mean i just i feel like we we definitely need to make sure our taxpayers are protected there this is this is dave sawyer i i would i would definitely agree uh we need to have something in there uh especially with mamba uh you know some kind of insurance requirements that they give us uh, I just see that being a, a more of a risk to uh, to the town than the snow machine, uh, only because they're running quiet and we have walkers up there in the summertime, uh, probably more so than than the winter. So I think I think that's a definite uh, thing that that I would agree we need to have some kind of minimum limits and, and requirement for that organization to have uh, an insurance policy. I think you want to handle that. Do you want us to contact Mamba and, or is that something Vince should do? Um, I, think, I, th I would think that since you guys have, are, are aware of what kind of, uh, this is just my, my thoughts, uh, that since you're aware of the, the requirements and what you're looking for from a conservation commission standpoint to the, uh, for protection from vast and, and what type of, uh, trail or what kind of damages are potential there that 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 would be something you guys would be better suited to handle than than vince um you're more familiar with it i don't know i, guess, I guess to me it's it gets into a legal or a liability thing which is um a little beyond my right, but you're, already, you're already working with that with vast so you must have some idea of what you're looking for right I just copied what was going on out of the Barry plan. Um, and Bass does, even with their um, private landholder, carries insurance. So it was just looking at what was standard out there. Um, and that's why it was suggested that it get reviewed by the town attorney to make sure it was okay. And well, then maybe, legal, maybe. legal stuff like this is beyond my ability to. Well, maybe you could ask Mamba. Maybe you could reach out to you know other communities, Millstone, find out what they're doing. Who who ultimately gives uh, Mamba or Vast the uh, go ahead? Is it, I mean, it, it, they're applying for a permit to run through the town forest, and Mamba is, and before they can get up in there, who do they see to to, to uh, Get that authorization. The select board is the final word on that. Based so on the recommendation good. from the Conservation Commission. In based the past, based right? on recommendations, but you, right. you guys are the final say on it. Yeah, right. we're just trying to get something down so we standardize it. Exactly. Okay. You know, yeah, so no, to, that's all. I'm, I'm yeah. just saying, I think that, that way we have a procedure and a process in place should another club or organization want to do something up there. I mean, Let's just say somebody wants to do disc golf course right. up there. Exactly. We find that group. Yeah. how are we going to have how are we going to have our standards set so that it's fair, uh, so that the town's protected. That that's all I'm asking for. Yeah. I'm not trying to be 
No, I think it's reasonable. I think we should have some something standardized when clubs come to us. And, you know, no matter wh what component it is, recreation, education, whatever, we want to make sure that when people are on that hill, we have some sort of coverage so we're not putting, as you say, the taxpayers at, you know, at risk, so to speak. So I think that's what we're striving to do, and this is the first step. And so is Dave Sawyer again. Go, going that we're into the season here is has it how does this operate with mamba now i mean i know they've been up there in the past do they has it just been taken for granted by them that maybe they're okay to go this year i mean what 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 has happened there does anybody really know are you asking if there's an annual approval process for utilization of the trail system yeah, basically i mean they've been up there in the past and and I, i'm assuming that these guys are riding now. Oh, they are. Yeah, they're riding now. I was up. I hiked the other day and I came across. a. Yeah, they're up there. There's no doubt about so, it. So I think in this management plan, as I recall, they're maybe maybe looking for an annual review or, or, or walkthrough and, and meeting with the vast vast for uh, their trail system. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, and we're looking at doing yeah. that with Mamba also. Or any review. Was that any club? Was yeah, any club. This management plan as well. Yes, it's in that yep. management plan that Great all review. any the only two that we okay. have up there right now is Mamba and um, Bass. But basically, there's a general quarter management um, section in the plan, and um, any quarter manager, which would be Bass or Mamba at this point, yep. would have an annual review and annual renewal. I think I think that's a great idea because you know we've talked about the the trails that have been cut in. Yes. Um, yes. I and agree. How, you know, like to put it in perspective, I know Vast has made promises that they would, in a lot of ways, kind of self-regulate, self-police, uh, try to help ensure everything is working just as planned. Um, and I think by having that annual review as well with the mountain biking. Um, if they're, you know, obviously if things don't go as planned with Vass and, and they're not a good partner to the community, then obviously we could rescind their access. Um, and so they were gonna do their best to, to, uh, to, to steward and keep the relationship moving forward in a positive direction with the town because there is a repercussion. Now, by adding that in with the mountain bikes um, and any other association that may come along that wants to utilize some of our, our valuable beautiful property um i feel as right now there 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 maybe isn't isn't much of an incentive for for mamba to uh say hey you guys cut that out or we're going to lose use of everything up here um so i appreciate yeah, you that's a good point yeah i agree with you yeah yeah i think i think we'll make an effort to reach out to whether it's uh brad watson or whoever we don't even know you know with vast we knew exactly who to who to go to Dave and Mark and you know the trail the trail master so to speak when we went that visit we don't I at least I don't have names uh of the, of people in Mumba that you know other than Brad Watson and we can make a phone call to him and tell him what our intent is and what the new uh design will be as far as using you know Berlin town lands we're going to have to have a yearly agreement and this is part of our new management plan Right. And I would also write into the agreement that, you know, I mean, I, I think that, and I don't know if it was in there, forgive me, uh, there's a lot of language in there. Uh, the, when you look at, let's say Mamba no longer, you know, they don't have an insurance policy. They don't have a policy that covers them. Uh, they're not good stewards or partners on the land up there with us. Um, and we decide to, to rescind their access. Now we're stuck with with what I would say is is kind of damaged property from all the switchbacks and things like that that have been created from the use of the trails, um, and there's no real way for us to repair that. So, you know, I would I would take that into consideration. Whereas, you know, the liability down the road for for other uses as well. Do you, you understand what I'm saying there? Oh yeah, I, I totally understand what you're saying. I think the the issue might be if we were to rescind uh, a yearly agreement because of some violation that may occur, uh, we're still, I don't know how we're gonna do it. It's a lot of property up there, but we're still probably gonna have to be in a position to 
police it in some way, whatever that means, because you're going to get renegade or pirate bikers coming through. And that's just, that's what happens, you know? Well, you could get John Quinn riding his four wheeler up to the tower too, but I mean, I'm just joking. <laughs> um, but you, you, I mean, it, it, yeah. it I mean, it's all part of, it's all part of the usage, but, but I don't think you would see quite as much traffic, quite as much usage if, if it wasn't club orientated. That's all. Yeah. Club um, sanction. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. No argument there. That's, I think that's how we proceed. All right. Any other updates, concerns, questions, anything from the board? I guess I'm not sure what, what's our next step here. Um, we haven't talked to Vass since we gave you the management plan. Um, I have a couple questions, Wendy, on the uh, management plan. Okay. Um, there was um, something written in there about um, the south side of the tower not going into that section of land until late in the year to do any of the uh, brushing and uh, maybe tree limb work that needs to be done. When, um, when I walked through and uh, staked that trail out, I hadn't gone through that trail with the guys like we walked through the um, other section, Darling Road section, like the trail builders and the guys that are going to groom, actually to groom the trail. So okay. we're not sure, you know, it, it, it does definitely to me look like it's going to be easy go through there, but I just haven't walked through with those guys to say, <sighs> well, we need to maybe widen this corner a little bit here. We need to, uh, I, I know towards the end of right by the uh, far Southern end of the property, there was a couple big um, berms of dirt and um, we may need to kind of smooth that out a little bit right there, but I'd, I'd like to talk with the uh, trail builders first and then also not be held to, um, if we did need to do that work this year, be held to waiting until towards the end of the year, maybe get an idea of what we needed to do there, you know, go through, get an idea of what we needed to do there, which is, I, I, you, you walk through, it's, it's very minimal, but I, there was a couple of spots that I thought might need a little bit of uh, dirt work, you know, a little bit of excavating work to smooth out. So should we plan a time to walk through with um, the club again? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, if, they, if that would work for you, um, we, I could go through with the club and if they say, oh, you know what, we don't really need to do anything, I could get back to you and say, no, nope, we're all good. We'll wait until this fall. We'll go through and clear it out. Um, other than that, I have a meeting with them on Wednesday night and, and I can find out what, what their thought is on that. There was another thing on there that you um, put in the management. I'll clarify on that. So if... Um if there was some earthwork that needed to be done, we would probably want to see that um, before you started in on it. Oh, absolutely. Um, no, absolutely. Okay. That, and, you know, and that's what I meant. If, the, if we walked through, found something, we would mark like the area where it would be. And then maybe just you and I or, you know, me and a couple people from the conservation board. And, and I can go up there and go over it with you. Um, okay. There was another thing in the management plan where it was... Um, absolutely no UTV use on that section of trail. And, um, and we'd like to make, you know, be able to go through with, you know, uh, weed whackers and stuff and maybe carry them on a UTV, you know, or gas and, you know, chainsaw that we would need to trim the branches. Um, I don't know if you had noticed when you walked through with Tom, we had um, gone through there a few times last year with our ATVs and we didn't, we didn't even break the sod open. I don't know if you could even tell that we had gone through with our ATVs last year. So if you needed to do that late in the season, um, yeah. you know, that's probably okay. You know, we'd like to minimize <clears throat> that and definitely not do it while all the vegetation, the, the spring ephemerals and that type of vegetation is still producing seeds. So, you know, late summer, you know, if you needed to do that to bring chainsaws, I think that I, I'm speaking for myself, but I think it, that you know, would be one okay. ATV well, going um, what, would be okay. What about if I do the walkthrough with them and we actually need to um, 
do some of that dirt work towards the end would be have to wait until the end of the season to do that. And that would be the only this year. We wouldn't have to do that anymore, you know, go through there ever again. It would be just the initial making of the trail. Which way would you come in from? You come in from the north or from the south? Um, that would still to be determined because I think actually we would probably be coming from the south, Wendy, because I know we had to do a little bit of work on some of the private land and we had let the uh, landowners know that we'd be coming through. So we'd probably come from the south side to do that little bit right there. Why don't, we, why don't you find out if there's a problem first and if there is, we'll discuss how to do it. Okay, that's great. There's a one, there was one other thing up there when we all when we all did our walkthrough and we kind of split off and the rest of us went all the way to the tower, we noticed right at the guide wire where, the, where we'd have to turn and go under the guide wire towards the actual cell tower. Looks like it was going to be a little bit dangerous right there. So we were wondering if we could, um, we walked through the woods and we were on the Berlin town forest and we can go right around the uh, guide wire and the uh, cell tower and cut right back onto the trail. So there was gonna be a little bit of work right there just to stay away from that guide wire that's up there. And, and maybe we could look at that. At, at yeah, we time. should look at it. I can't visualize what you're saying, but maybe we should take a look and see what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah, and that's a, that was a place that I knew we were definitely gonna um, look to have some work done and that would probably be accessed from the darling roadside you know because we'd be going up doing all the ditching you know clearing the debris out of the uh ditches and fixing the water bars right at that same time hey josh why don't you go to the meeting wednesday night and yeah. propose uh propose another walk through get a couple dates from them that might okay. work, and then we can get back together with you and, and schedule that Sure. And, you know, I think I think that's probably uh, the best way to proceed right now. And then everybody, you know, we can go over a few other things that, you know, that we, we may have a few dangling questions from our last walk that we want to just address, make sure we're all on the same page. But I think overall, I think, uh, you know, we have plenty of time. We're moving forward. Uh, you know, we've got the recommendations, the report out all before June 1st. We've already walked once with you. I think we'll get another walk in. I think, you know, things seem to be moving pretty well. Okay. Yeah, so this walk would probably be just what we were gonna initially do from, from the, the cell, cell tower, tower south. Yeah, that'd be yeah. right. Okay. Great. Right. Thank right. you. Does uh, the board have any additional questions about this uh, management plan? Does the Conservation Commission, do you guys understand what we're looking for in the management plan? Some of the changes we've seen so far, some of the things we've discussed this evening? Yeah, most of what you've talked about is gonna be in the agreement, um, a corridor agreement. Um, for instance, the insurance, if you look in the appendices where the corridor agreement is, it talks about insurance. So that's not really in the management plan, it's down in the agreement that we sign annually with. Um, right, it's all part of the management plan. Um, yeah, and the, the agreement is something that we wanted you to look at and also perhaps have some legal person look at it just to make sure it's, it's good. Okay. Do we, would we have Rob Halpert look at that at all for us or what does the board think? I think that's probably a smart thing. I don't know, um, especially when it comes to the insurance side of things. Brad, John, Flo, any input? Yeah, he's their town lawyer. I mean, that's where it should go. Yeah, let's forward it on and uh, see what see what see what he feels about the changes. Okay, Vince. Yep, I will. I'll, I'll work with the, the committee to get that. Just a reminder on this. Um, the, the management plan needs to be finalized and approved by the board before it goes to Vermont Land Trust for approval on this to wrap this up. Right. So, so I think, so I we, think can, we need to we look at a timeline. Some, so we can get some overall feedback from, from our town attorney 
see what he says and that'll help us determine a timeline if if he says yeah it looks good overall then then I, I think we would be able to move forward uh my the concern would be if he, if he said no this is crazy no way then obviously <laughs> that would determine it that would be a different timeline but any of these small minor changes wouldn't impact the overall aspect of the, the management plan so we would we would be okay okay just for review, the, the big thing you're talking about is the insurance and I would just make sure that it all you're open for all future organizations and that uh, the big thing is that if you're going to require insurance from one, you would require it from any other, you know, I mean, I would make sure that the liabilities uh, and the protections are there for the community. Uh, just because it's standard for VAST to have liability insurance doesn't mean that there's we don't need coverage from any of these other entities even if it's not standard in my opinion um hey but justin I, I, just yeah sorry just a note um mr staub has his hand up for a question go ahead joe okay so um with all this talk about the trails i'm just going to ask just for the the fire department's sake if we had to go up there is there been any thought of having maybe multiple access points to this trail or we're going to go in one way and, and travel x number of miles till we get to get to a point just uh something to think about i think that that there should probably that's a great great point to bring up and does this management plan or include any uh emergency ingress and egress situations or scenarios or, or areas where we can alter i mean obviously for utvs atvs things like that snowmobiles in the winter time does, does it address those definitely not <laughs> then, then we probably should do that we're gonna we're gonna get moving on um so i think we've got we've got a fair amount there we're gonna send that on to the attorney um and and I, you guys can come back to the board with those changes as, as well because those are just minor revisions and, and we can send this off to rob and, and start getting a better look at it and make sure every the, the actual kind of structure the base of it's good the other the other piece on the agenda that went along with this was the uh the black road bridge uh wendy had brought to my concern that maybe it wasn't properly warned and maybe that um we use funds from a budget uh that 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 we you know we didn't warn them properly as well um, and questions about being capital improvement now when we made the the motion to 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 use uh, and also you in there it had said that i'd like to add that the conservation commission met with vast leadership on march 15th and we were told that they would be picking up the cost of the black road bridge so for clarification vast was never going to uh, be picking up the cost of the Black Road Bridge. I'm not sure where that came from. The all the conversations we've had in reference to vast and bridges has been that the town would like to own those bridges, so that if we ever did rescind the trail use, those would still be considered a um, those would still be considered a, a, the town's property, so that th those would may stay there. Um, otherwise, if if vast were to build them they would have the right to remove the bridges if they paid for the materials. Now that doesn't mean that VAST isn't going to help provide an intense amount or an excessive amount of free labor. Um, so the other piece to that is, is that, that there's an existing bridge um, on Black Road that people use for walking, mountain biking. Uh, it, it's in dangerous repair, the same scenario as uh, the the Darling Road bridge that we're looking at replacing uh, that bridge uh, on Darling Road. It, it, we're using funds from the Conservation Commission um, that were in the budget to answer your budget question. The question about using money from the, the budget for the, the rec, uh, we weren't we were actually using um, we weren't using money out of their budget. We were using money out of reserves. Yeah, so, I'm just concerned. I just want to make sure that, you know, we don't we get any surprises coming we out of our 
conservation fund? Well, it sounded like in that question, in a lot of this, you were concerned for the concert or the, the rep as well. So those funds that we approved for usage, though they were from the, the uh, what were they, the bike path fund, Brad, as you recall? You made the motion. Yeah, he said there were some funds available from the bike path. If it ran overage, uh, it would we could use those funds, if I remember correctly. Brad, can you do you recall the motion? The, what Dave said is pretty close. Um, it was the discussion went on about uh, the worry of the uh, cost overrun. There is. Approximately, I don't know, I'm guessing about 40,000 in the bike path fund. Um, the, as I explained, the bike path, that money was to be used to put a bike path down along the railroad tracks from uh, uh, in the Berlin section of the proposed bike path between Barry and Montpelier. Uh, the railroad has since rescinded any any uh, usage of the of the right of way, so that money is sitting there. It's dedicated to a bike path. Um, so, like I said, I think any overages you could take out of the bike path fund and and do it with a clear conscience. Right now, what about the funding for the the, the Black Road Bridge itself? Where do we make that motion from? Do you recall? Vince? I can't remember that one. Um, I thought it was the rec path. The, or the bike I, path. Yeah. Um, like I said, uh, even if the the Black Road Bridge to be repaired or to be improved, um, as long as it's used by bicyclists, you can probably, you, you want to check with Rob, but you could probably take and use that bike path money for that. We've do, we've We've, We've uh, used it for, it, the, it for the bridge across the across the, uh, there by uh, uh, Champlain Valley Equipment. Right. We gave them quite a chunk of it to do that bridge. I recall that. Now I know that trail that road gets utilized an awful lot by mountain bikers going in from what the Boyer State Forest side up on Crosstown. They come down um, and then they go out. Brookfield Road to Black Road and then back up to complete their loop. That gets utilized a lot. Um, and the, the bridge is in disrepair, much like the, the Darling Road Bridge. Um, and it's rather dangerous and maybe, I don't know if it's a liability to the town or not. But uh, there was concerns about the warning of that. Um, and, and, and so what I, I guess I'm looking for from the board maybe is a, a motion to do the black road bridge using bike path funds um like we talked about the last meeting i check with rob first you what so yeah what about our the initial the the uh initial motion that was made uh where do we go from there We've given approval for for construction of these. We've given approval for funding. How should we proceed? Well, uh, if you've got the, if you've got the funding now, you put it out to bid. Well, we, if the bridge is going to be built, so we've already we talked about we already the, talked uh, Snowville Club. We already talked about was the that? material. We already talked about the materials, and that was included in the approval that we gave at the last meeting. Uh, remember when we talked about Font Fontaine? That was that was that was from Fontaine. That was for uh, both bridges. For both bridges? Yeah. So both that was for the approval yeah. for the materials for both bridges, um, and the labor was completely covered. So yeah. like that's all and, volunteer. And so we already approved the, the the materials at the last meeting. So I just want to yeah. see if the board would like to proceed with that. Well, I don't, I don't see why not because um, you were co you, you, the way the emotion read was you weren't going to use the bike path funds unless there was an overage. And as I understood it, 
you were pretty well set on your prices, so you we were, didn't we have had, to worry about the overage. But so, so there was a concern um, that we didn't properly notify the recreation board that we were going to use those funds because we weren't using conservation funds for all of it. Does the board have any concerns with that? I check with the recreation committee and and uh, see if they what if uh, they really have any objections to it. I mean it. The, the, the trail system is, is part of the recreation committee's uh, billywhack, really. Is anybody from the recreation committee on this meeting? No. Okay. Justin, I feel, I feel the motion, the way that that went down is all right. If we haven't been contact, contact, con, contacted, excuse me, by anybody on the recreation committee with, with, with any concerns about that, uh, this is a part of the recreation, you know, right. in town, and I feel confident that we proceed the way we were. If there well, is an overage, and ultimately the the select board would make the determination on how to use those funds. Those so funds I just, exactly. I just yeah. wanted to, I wanted to clear some air there. Yeah. No. So and I hear you. It, why is it that we're not using any conservation funds for this? We are the only a portion of them up to a certain dollar amount. So, I don't so we're using okay. conservation funds on the Darling Road Bridge, but not the Black Road Bridge. And, and so you're wondering why we're not using conservation funds on the Black Road Bridge as well? Yep. Well, I think we were trying to help conserve some of their budget, but I mean, that's always an option as well because they had originally budgeted for $5,000 um, and, and we're coming in at three, but I mean, we've already made made the, the determination, but I, I understand your point, John. You weren't at that meeting. It's a great question. Can I just uh, put something in for the um, the conservation fund? The conservation <coughs> fund is set up to buy land or or water to conserve. Um, it's not set up. If you read the guidelines, which are on the website, it's not set up for infrastructure unless it is part of conserving land or water um so but, if it but was you were going to pay five thousand dollars out of that you were going to pay five thousand dollars out of that apparently. yeah i think that was as i said at the last meeting i think that offer was made because the bridge was in bad shape where at the beginning of covid it was un. and i think phil can talk to this more than i can but my understanding was that there was concern about finances going into the COVID situation and the bridge needed to be repaired. And, and exactly. I'll let Phil talk. Exactly, we're trying to be good neighbors and get, a, get it remediated as soon as possible. And we had $2,500 or $2,800 material and we were paying someone to help us construct the bridge. That's all changed. No. Yeah. I, so, I get that, but you can't, we can't change the rules as we go, right? Well, we, we can take new information, John, and make new decisions. Or, John, we could go back and follow the guidelines that are out on the website and refinance the bridge from another source. Right. We don't have to use any conservation funds for the bridge. That would be the appropriate thing to do at this point. Probably. So we could well, probably shut right. the bridge down until we have a new one. Right. And we could also, I think it's just appropriate they, that these funds should either come out of recreation or... Possibly the bike path, as Brad was initially stating, because we know that the, the bike path, as we envisioned it 10 years ago, or whenever, I don't know, Brad, when did that funding come through? Eight, 10 years ago? And oh, longer ago than that. The, uh, the problem is, is that the, some of that money was donated. Some of it was voted in from uh, the town budget. Uh, I'm guessing that was back in the late 80s, early 90s. The... Uh, uh, since since then, as, as I said, the, the the bike path has pretty well gone by the wayside. But that money was still dedicated to the bike path. Mm -hmm. If you use it for a bike path in the town of Berlin, or a bike path uh, in general, I think you're all right. But like I said, you want to check with Rob just to just to make sure. But yep. I think you're all right. All right. So I think we're going to move along. If you wanted to use the bike path money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're going to move along. We're going to leave leave everything as it stood. Um, 
Any other questions or concerns? All right, Fisher Road culvert update. Um, Tom, would you like to brief him on the latest information that you have? I think Chip's here, so maybe Chip can speak to. Uh, uh, he is. Oh. You're right. Okay. Hello, you hear me? Yes. Go ahead, Chip. Hey, worked better than the last time. <laughs> uh, maybe. Yeah, we've had some some talk about uh, um, about that there, and and uh, we've had a couple discussions, and what we're really looking for is. Uh, um, to change what we have as an easement there, whether it be um, just a you know, purchase of that section of, of the road that's a surface easement now by the town and including where the, I don't know the, the correct uh, term for it, but where the part of the culvert structure um, goes on to the incorporated land there, um, either be you know straight out purchase or change change from the uh, surface easement as it is now. I'd like to get out of um, the easement business a little bit, if possible. So we, we don't have any problem with, with the design. I think we've talked about that before. Um, and even with it, you know, as it is right now, um, you know, using the land, our land to, to you know, to do what construction is needed. Um, no problem with that at all. Great, Chip. Thanks. Um, so you, you've got some information. Oh, Tom, you were just about to kick on. That's fine. I'll let you speak to it then. Yeah, I think, Chip, you mentioned that you're looking at a 30K for the surface rights and some maybe some additional uh, property there that uh, this wing wall would go on. So I think that's the that's what the select board needs to, to consider. The, uh, you mean... Th 30,000 for all the subsurface roads as well, right? That, I think that's what Chip told me today. Yes, right. Yes. Yep. And then my only, my concern with that was, you know, any any impact or liability to the town. So by by picking up that uh, that property, is there anything there that we would inherit that we were would maybe regret? So I think, you know, from, from my conversations um, and, and my thoughts, I was thinking that, maybe a purchase option, um, entering into an agreement for a purchase option for $30,000 uh, with some timelines would allow us to do our due diligence and also allow for um, planning to continue, it wouldn't hold up the project. Um, and I think it might make the most sense given, given that. I don't know what the board's opinion is or not, but. My, my sense is that there's little to no liability from for the from the town what's there it's we we own surface and subsurface rights throughout the town and i think it's that's been an issue my concern with any further delay is that we're just not going to make construction this this year and what do you need to go forward now Tom, just to get this thing put to bed on this easement uh, for VTrans to sign off, the VTrans needs a, a letter from our attorney saying that all rights of way have all been have been obtained. So does so we need? We, I mean, what are we talking for a closing time frame? Even if we entered into uh, a purchase agreement instead of a purchase option, we're still talking a fair amount of time, probably before we'd have an actual sort of closing, um, what is the, the significance and difference or, or what would, what do you see any difference in those two? Do you see any concerns for um, delay entering into a, a purchase agreement now or, or a purchase option either way? I, I would suggest then if Chip would agree that, that if, if the select board's going that route and negotiating in good faith that, that they do sign the easement as is, and the easement's going to be um, temporary because the town will own it um, once you do the purchase. So once we have that signed easement, they, they literally could sign that tomorrow and we would have the necessary easements we need to, to satisfy VTrans. So 
what we we meet, need a motion to proceed with the purchase uh is that what you'd be looking for is that what you're looking for if it's that's, like that's what we would be looking for in order to proceed chip how do you feel about how do you feel about what tom just stated yeah i don't i don't have a problem with that i can um i can try to get that looked at in a different way uh tomorrow and if 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 he doesn't have a problem with it and thinks that it's fine. I mean, I don't, I honestly don't think, you know, I have a lot to worry about from the select board. So, right. uh, I mean, I, I don't know why, I don't know why it wouldn't be okay. Um, I just want to make sure that I, I don't, you know, stick myself in a corner or you guys, to be honest with you. So I will make a phone call early tomorrow morning and um, then I will get back to you if that works out for you. All right. How does the but rest? I, of the, I don't see. A, I don't see. A, I don't see a problem with that. How does the rest of the board feel? I think it's something we need to do. I, I, we shouldn't be messing around here with this. We should just get it going. And 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 time is of the essence. I think if we if we if we don't act on this now, the cost of concrete and stuff here in the foreseeable future is going to, you know. We're gonna put. We're gonna get ourselves painted into a corner that we don't want to be in. I think we need to get this thing done. John, Brad, Flo. What account is the money coming out of? Where are we getting the money? Thirty-three thousand dollars. Thirty. Is that is that the purchase price? Purchase 30. price would be thirty thousand um, dollars. Vince. Any idea where we would fund this from, Tom? I'll have to take a look. Tom, we've gotten seven. this far, and like I, I get the need for it, and I, I completely support it. But we're about to make a motion, and we don't have any idea where we'd get the funds from. Well, in, in, all, in all honesty, we just heard about this offer about an hour, or two hours ago. So. Um, okay. um, uh, the, the, I believe the select board has reserve funds that we've, we've used some for the last budgeting process. I just don't know how, how all that works from the, I don't know if Diane's still on the phone here or not. I don't know if she's still here or not. But, um, oh, she's not. Yeah. Well, I think that, I think that could be worked out too. If it, you know, if it, if it's not a get it all at once. I mean, I don't. I don't know why that wouldn't be. Why that wouldn't be okay. No, it, I, I'm sure you know, we have a chip. It was. It was a pretty simple accounting question. Just. Uh, right. I was just curious <laughs> which account line it was coming out of. But re remember, re remember, we're we're taking a loan out for this, so this would be an eligible expense in in the loan for this project. Oh yeah. Would that could that be tied in with the uh, culvert itself, Tom? Uh, that is, we we have um, tight. okay correct the loan for the culvert to one point well the project's one point four million but the select board is has to use some dedicated funds so it's I think we're borrowing one point one or one point two million. John, sounds like sounds like you might have an idea where we should get this from. <laughs> yeah. Do you care to do you care to make a motion? I don't. <laughs> how would how would you how would you like I, I, honestly you, I don't know what the at this at this moment I don't know what the motion would be. We're wait um Chip's gonna check in with his team tomorrow to make sure everything's okay, but I mean what are we making a motion on here, Justin? Well we're looking to make a motion to purchase the property from Legia Inc. for 30000 Um We don't really know where the funding would come from, which I agree with. Um, we don't, I mean, I, I don't know if the, has, has the board seen a recent copy of, or map of, of what we'd actually be purchasing with the $30,000? Um, have, we, have we got any of that? So, okay. I got it here. So, um, I make a motion to uh, authorize the town administrator to 
enter into a purchase and sales agreement um, for uh, easement rights on Fisher Road in the amount of $30,000. Can I get a second? Come out second. Of any any discussion? Second. Any discussion? Uh, I'm, just, I'm just wondering you if said that that, that thirty thousand dollars could take. In I'm sorry, Brad. What? You said that thirty thousand dollars come come out of the loan money. It, it, it's an eligible yeah. expense. Okay, and uh, Chip, uh, are we just purchasing uh, uh, the the easement? Uh, subservice easement or what are we purchasing here we're i i don't know if that would be easier and faster to be honest with you because that would my issue with the way the original is easement was written is what my responsibilities would be in the future um for items that are in that easement um and then it would also be for that little piece where the wing wall is um there but you know, as far as that goes, whatever, what, whatever is most expeditious so we can get it done. Um, if it, if it's just turns that from a surface easement into a full blown, you know, easement like you normally would have, if that works better, um, or if it's the actual piece of property that's, it would be to, you know, the edge of the road. Um, I don't know how much that helps you or not. Yeah, I, I think it's a combination of two things, Brad. It's the subsurface rights that, that Chip mentioned. And then he also, he is correct. There probably some additional uh, real property, real estate there where this wing wall is going to go. And he said he's going to give us a, a temporary right. construction easement to allow us to do the construction over his land. So, so I would amend my motion to uh, for the sale of property and easement rights. And that should give the town administrator enough flexibility to um, purchase the sales. All right. I'd, I'd second that. That one sounds a lot more. <laughs> that one Perfect. sounds better to me. I think Perfect. the other one was kind of uh, vague when it was saying about easement. <laughs> or an easement instead of the real property. Well, you could have made it instead of me, Dave. <laughs> well, I weren't. No, I was. I was trying to think of how to do it, so I was kind of, you know, <laughs> probably right where you were and thought. All right. Any additional discussion? All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Perfect. Thank you, Chip. Appreciate nope, your time. No, nope. no problem. Thanks, Chip. Right Thanks, on. Chip. Appreciate your time. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Yeah, I'll, Google, I'll be in contact Google. tomorrow, Tom. Excellent. Hey. Approvals of license, permits, vouchers, and applications. Come on, Flo. I know you got that right there. Move to approve. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a second? Second it. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Did we get Dave or John? Yeah, I said aye. All right, motion carries. Uh, March 8th minutes. Sorry about that. I was on I was on mute. I didn't realize I was on mute that whole time. I was trying to ask a question uh, specific to the payroll. Oh, go I, ahead. I can bring it up after since we've gone past it if you want in the round table. There's no Sounds action good. associated with it, so I can bring it up then if you want. Yep, let's do Mr. that. Mr. Chair. March eighth minutes. Sorry, John. I didn't know I skipped ahead of you. Uh March eighth minutes. Can we get a I'd make a motion to accept the March 8th minutes as presented. Any discussion? Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, 
April 19th minutes. I don't think I was there for that whole meeting. I think I actually had uh, got knocked off the web at that one. Yep. I wasn't in attendance on that one. I make the motion to approve the April 19th minutes as presented. Can I get a second? A uh, second. Yeah, second. Discussion. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Dane. I have to abstain. We're waiting on John. I apologize. I was trying to make sure I was at that meeting. I can't find those minutes. It was April my, uh, they packet. Okay. So we'll put those That's the only reason. Well, I just, if someone could tell me it was, if I was in attendance, I just have all the documents open here. I'm trying to look through them to find the right one. It was over the kids' April vacation. I I chaired the meeting. I don't think you were there, John. It was, uh, John, I don't think you were there. This is the one that the chief, I think you and Justin were both absent in that meeting. This is the one that the chief talked about the hilltop. I believe you and oh. uh, Justin were absent. Then I was definitely there, so I'll do what I. All right, motion carries. <laughs> All right, um, round table, John. Yep, um, I, I just had some questions looking at the payroll warrants. Um, Vince, it looks like our overtime continues to continue to be an issue. Um, looking at where we are with budget to actuals, um, specifically the um, the assistant town administrator position as one. And then I'm trying to figure out, it looks like every week um, there's ongoing um, overtime in the highway department. And I'd like there to be a way for the the select board to understand what it is and how we're approving overtime in those areas. So, so thinking about it, so I see Saturday, someone went out for three hours. Um, and then a number of times during the week, there was one or two hours here or there. And normally, you know, it, it happens, I get it, but we're going from a, you know, $25 an hour rate to a $40 an hour rate. Um, when it comes to highway, um, as an example. Yes, so I'm wondering, how does that get approved? Every, you know, every day obviously isn't an emergency. So I'm wondering who's approving the overtime. Yeah. Um, well, it, sh it should be me. That's the answer. Right. The Saturday one I can speak to, uh, some of the others I, I can't yet. Um, and I'm trying to develop uh, at least some sort of call call me, right, basis, um, if it's something that comes up like that. So there aren't any surprises, John. I don't have it in place yet, but that's the first method. Um, and the quickest one, right, is just a call me, night or day. If something comes up, you got to do some urgent overtime. Saturday I know about because I came down and directed traffic on the Payne Turnpike South for the hole in the road <laughs> until they got there. Um, so I'm working on putting something in place to, to, uh, to get that under control yeah and and you know even it, it can be something simple like you know uh you know hole in the road three hours whatever it is but there's no description on any of it yeah. and in in some of the cases i can kind of I, I can make an assumption about what's going on but um if we could get some kind of process in place there that'd be really helpful well yeah no we we need to and i and i, and I agree uh, we need to understand Again, it's and it's only going to help us going forward with, you know, our budgets as well. If we know what's happening and when it's happening, we can plan accordingly and and uh, better manage it. So, I'll have so something we, in place hopefully in the next couple of weeks to to mitigate some of that. It won't be perfect, but it'll help bring it under control. 
So can you can you just put that down to give us an update at our next meeting on where you're sure. at with that? Yeah, our, actually, I already put it down. <laughs> okay, then. Sorry, I asked. <laughs> um, anything else, John, for roundtable? No, I would just say overall, looking at the the April statement, it looks like overall we're doing pretty well. But as I brought up during the Good Samaritan conversation, um, our police department budget is way over from a um, full-time officer and part-time or uh, overtime, as well as part-time officer. Uh, oh. And I'm wondering what what we're doing in order to you know bring that down. So I can speak briefly on that, John, and I've been in discussions with Ben Rose um, with regards to getting some reimbursement for all the overtime. Um, it's, I, I, I can't quote the chief on it, but I think it's somewhere in the $5,000 range, um, specifically related to the Hilltop issues. Um, and what he's told me at this point is there will be money in the ARPA program for the municipalities to use to pay for that. Um, if, if there isn't, uh, he is looking at some alternative plans uh, that we may be able to apply for that he'll help us with uh, to get that back. But he, he thinks the quickest and easiest is what he's looking at coming out in the ARPA funding that we'll be able to dedicate um, that overtime cost and recover that from those funds. So that'll help to, to some degree um, from what the chief's been tracking on that, so. Okay. Hopefully bring it back to more in line with the budget. Mm -hmm. you know, we need to stay on top of this for sure. Um, so I appreciate you bringing that up, John. Yeah, and I'm just I'm just waiting on more information to come out from from Ben and from the ARPA on that to have a better answer. So, thank you, Vince. Okay. Thank you all. Any anything else, John? I I just got one thing real quick, I and I talked to Tom Tom uh, Badowski there, and I, I mentioned, and it's about uh, starting to think in town where we're going. Uh, with all these new buildings and stuff and the possibilities of either contracting maybe with uh, Barry or Montpelier for building inspections. Uh, you know, we're giving all these building permits out. I, and the only reason I bring this up is I had a woman call me, uh, I think it was a week ago, Sunday, she had contracted somebody to do a deck and a roof for her. And I was appalled when I got over there and seen that it wasn't just structurally sound. There's gotta be some kind of recourse or we could start looking to in the town as we're growing to maybe uh, having a building inspector. Uh, to, I, I, uh, I think that goes in line, Dave, with, with part of what we talked about with the fire department. We, we need to have building inspection. We need to follow code. We need to have follow up. Um, and that's all part of, of bringing the, I, I mean, I think that we need to have we need to have a conversation around it. I don't know that, I don't know that subbing it out to an, another municipality is an option realistically. I don't know yeah. if, if that is, but I, I definitely think that we could probably take a good look at some of their procedures uh, and some of the ordinances that they have. But we, I mean, it goes the same with in part, apartment inspections or rental properties. Uh, exactly. The uh, we need to have, at least on the commercial side, I mean, the, the residential side would take a while, but I, I feel like if we, if we don't put some of this in on the commercial side, we're, we're going to be behind behind when, when the trains already left the station. Exactly. <clears throat> so, no, that's why the only reason I brought it up is because I'm, I'm seeing some of this out there and, and I'm sure you have, as other people have, it seems like there's more, you know, with the state not having a contractor's license or, anything like that you're getting more and more of uh the, the you know everybody's got a saw and a hammer and they're they're a contractor i, yep. I think that us going forward we need to start really thinking about uh uh you know whether it's through the fire department which is a good start 
but making sure that that they need to have a code and a code enforcement. Exactly. So it's something we need to start talking about. Okay. So let's uh, let's do some research. I know you like doing that, and you can figure out when <laughs> we should start the conversation. How's that? Yep. I will. I will get on it. Thanks, Dave. Anything else? <laughs> Brad, Flo, anything for roundtable? Nothing like, for me. No. Nothing for you, Brad. No, I'm all set. Okay. Uh, no executive session, right, Vince? That's correct. Entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. I'll make the motion. All right. So say we got a, we got a second there. Second. Um, yep. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Adjourned. Thank you. Thank guys. you very much. Everybody. Thank you, everyone.